I just came across this fantastic site last week. Basically, it does a lot of the hard work for us. It has, for many seasons, for many leagues, loads and loads of data. And it's freely available. I'll have the URL in the description below the video. So I'm, say, looking at the Premier League. I just clicked on that Premier League, downloaded an Excel file, and here it is. Okay, I'll just move that there. So game after game after game, tells us you know uh, what the halftime results were what the full times I mean there are so many headers it does have a, a file which explains what sh what they all are so I think the HG was home goal a G was away goal so full time it was nil one Swansea one one nil Well, that's strange because Swan. I mean, Burnley have been superb at home. Full time result away. Half time, home goal nil nil. So we we know what the half time result was. Goal wise, the full time result was. We know who the referee was, which is handy. Uh, I, I mean, I know I have another site where, you know, it, it keeps track of results by referee. The reason that's interesting is because, you know, certain referees tend to give far more cards. So then if you have two teams playing who tend to have lots of cards and you have a referee who tends to give lots of cards there might be value betting on lots of cards because the people who'd be betting typically wouldn't have done all this work. So they wouldn't know, oh, this referee is in charge. That We're, we're going to get more than, uh, we're going to get four or more yellow cards, that kind of thing. So as you can see, I mean, you know, I don't know what half of these... Um, categories are <laughs> um, yeah th there's lots of data so now I could get you know before we did we, you know we'd look at the I went to the BBC website and I got the results from there so, you know, I'd know um, Arsenal beat some team 3-0. And then I could take each of the scores and update the table to generate the table. But also do more. I could generate a table for how Arsenal did at home, how Arsenal did away. I could keep track of how many cards were shown I don't think I did, but in theory I could because that information is available there too. This is handy because, you know, they've done it for us. And they actually regularly update it. So it's not like, oh, I download this file and then I have the information for her last year. It actually um, goes up to the latest match. Now, I, I didn't download this file just now. I'm just using the file I, I downloaded when I looked at it the first time. So 
Yeah, and so that would have been like a week ago. But I think I was looking at this on the 6th of December. Well, that's when I first came across this website. And it had updated the table right up to the day before, if not even that day. But, you know, it's so it's very up to date. So the idea then is, well, feed this into R. So we have lots of data. And isn't that the point of machine learning? You know, that I don't see, I don't expect certain correlations. I, I expect, so if I'm trying to predict who's going to win the next game, I would expect, I'd look at how many, how often the home team wins, how often the away team wins, or how often the away team loses, if I'm trying to predict how, the probability of the home team winning. And that way kind of construct a model. That isn't how uh, the machine's going to do it. I mean, it, it's going to look at different... It's going to be able to process all these fields and, and, and pick out patterns which I'd never uh, look for. I mean, I'd imagine that the vast bulk of these fields are going to be irrelevant. You know, there's not going to be any information. It's not going to be correlated or useful for predicting who's going to win. I guess. But it's the process. So on the one hand, thank you very much, uh, that website, for, you know, giving us this information. And then we can see what the structure of the problem is. Uh, is it just going to be writing a couple of lines of code? I mean, I can imagine it being, um, you know, just feed in that information, load it into uh, probably, would it be a data table? So load that in there, and then just say uh, predicted results is equal to uh, predict and give it the historical results. And it, it uh, let R do its thing, and then tell it to predict what's going to happen. And as we, I think, looked at in some of the R lessons, you know, what we want to do is maybe give it the first um, six or seven games, use them to train, and then try and predict the eighth game. You know, and so, you know, we don't, uh, we can use it in various different ways. But since they've loaded in the information for us, that saves us a lot of hassle. And this also has various pieces of information that, I don't normally have. So that's going to be a project that we're going to be doing for the next. I mean, I my plan is to have it done by the end of January. It could be a lot faster. So that's the main developments today. Should be fun. <laughs>